Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat sejahtera. Now it's time for topical exercise 2 for topic accounting for receivable. To test your understanding and knowledge in this topic. If you find it is beneficial, please subscribe, like and share. Topical exercise 2. Syarikat Bollywood.com started its business on 1st January 2016. On year 2019, opening balance of accounts receivable is RM120,000. And this transaction have occurred. The transaction are on 24 July, 10 August, 14 October, 31st December 2019 and also on 25th May 2020, 30th November and 31st December 2020. Requirement Prepare journal entry for the above transaction. The narration not required. B. Show accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful debt accounts for the year 2019 and 2020. C. Shows accounts receivable in the Statement of Financial Position as at 31st December 2020. Now we look at the answer for question A, General Journal. On 24th July 2019, the company recognizes one of the debtor named Salmon Han has gone bankrupt and unable to pay his debt. Ini bermaksud pada 24 Julai, syarikat telah mengenal pasti seorang penghutang bernama Salmon Han telah bankrupt dan tidak dapat membayar hutangnya sebanyak RM5,000. Oleh itu, Akaun yang perlu dibuat adalah Bad Debt Expenses. So, the general journal is Debit Bad Debt Expenses 5000 and Credit Accounts Receivable 5000. On 10 August 2019, Shah Rukh Han, a debtor, is unable to pay his debt amounted 7,500 due to unexpected losses. Ini juga bermaksud seorang debtor bernama Shah Rukh Han tidak dapat membayar hutangnya berjumlah 7,500 kerana mengalami kerugian. So, ini juga melibatkan account bad debt expenses. So, the general journal is Debit, bad debt expenses 7,500 and credit accounts receivable 7,500. On 14 October 2019, Salman Han has paid 2,500 to settle his return of bad debt. Ini bermaksud Salman Han telah membayar hutangnya sebanyak RM2,500. To settle his return of bad debt, ayat ini bermaksud hutang Salman Han sebelum ini telah direkod sebagai bad debt expenses dan telah dihapuskan rekodnya dari akaun syarikat. Apabila Salman Han membayar semula, ini bermaksud bad debt recovery. Oleh itu, Dua catatan jurnal perlu direkodkan iaitu debit accounts receivable 2500 and credit bad debt recovery 2500. The second journal is debit cash 2500 and credit accounts receivable 2500. Due to economic problem, the company has decided to make an allowance for doubtful debt with estimation of 10% from net credit sales. 
allowance was made on 31st December 2019 and the total net credit sales for the year 2019 is 100,000. Ayat ini bermaksud syarikat telah memutuskan untuk membuat peruntukan hutang ragu atau allowance for doubtful debt dengan anggaran 10% dari jualan kredit bersih. Ini bermaksud keadaan yang digunakan adalah percentage of net credit sales method di mana jumlah kredit bersih untuk tahun 2019 adalah RM100,000. For journal entry, first of all, record the sales for the year 2019. Debit Accounts receivable 100,000 and credit sales 100,000. Kita debitkan accounts receivable kerana ia adalah net credit sales. Then, record the bad debt expenses. To calculate the bad debt expenses in this method is simple. Credit sales multiply with estimation percentage. So, the general entry is debit, bad debt expenses 10,000, credit allowance for doubtful debt 10,000. The 10,000 we get from 100,000 the net credit sales multiply with 10% estimation percentage. On 25th May 2020, a debtor named Amir Khan has gone bankrupt and unable to pay his debt of RM15,000. Ini bermaksud Amir Khan telah bankrupt dan tidak akan dapat membayar hutangnya. Oleh itu, syarikat akan menghapuskan atau write off his bad debt. The general entry is debit allowance for doubtful debt 15,000 and credit accounts receivable 15,000. And on 30th November 2020, Amir Han is able to settle one third of his debt. Ini bermaksud bad debt recovery kerana akaun Amir Khan telah pun dihapuskan pada 25 Mei lalu. Oleh itu, dua catatan jurnalnya adalah debit accounts receivable 5,000, credit bad debt recovery 5,000. 5,000 diperolehi daripada one third multiply with 15,000. And the second journal is debit cash 5,000 and credit accounts receivable 5,000. On 31st December 2020, the company provides 10% of the net credit sales as an allowance for doubtful debt. Net credit sales for the year 2020 is RM150,000. Pada 31 Disember 2020 juga, syarikat menggunakan keadaan yang sama dengan 31 Disember 2019. So, the general entry is First of all, Record the sales for the year 2020. Debit accounts receivable 150,000 and credit sales 150,000. Then record the bad debt expenses. To calculate the bad debt expenses in this method is Net credit sales multiply with the estimation percentage. So, the general entry is debit bad debt expenses 15,000 and credit allowance for doubtful debt 15,000. 
15,000 we can get from 150,000 multiply with 10%. Question B is, show accounts receivable and allowance for doubtful debt accounts for the year 2019 and 2020. Firstly, make a T accounts for accounts receivable. We start with the year 2019. Fill in the balance brought forward at debit side and sales on 14 October. At the credit side is 24th July bad debt expenses, 10 August bad debt expenses, and 14 October is cash. All this information are from the answer in question A. Then balance the accounts left and right. Then we can get the balance carry forward. 207,500, the balance carry forward in 2019 will be balance brought forward in 2020. Then fill in the sales at the debit side and AFDD at the credit side. Balance the accounts left and right in 2020, then we can get the balance carry forward is 342,500 and it will be balance brought forward in 2020. Secondly, make a T account for AFDD. Allowance for doubtful debt. We start with the year 2019. Fill in the balance brought forward at the credit side and bad debt expenses on 31st December 2019. All these informations are also from the answer in question A. Then balance the accounts left and right then we can get the balance carry forward is 10,000. The balance carry forward in 2019 will be balance brought forward in 2020. Then fill in accounts receivable at the debit side and bad debt expenses at the credit side. Balance the accounts left and right, then we can get the balance carry forward is 10,000 at the debit side. And it will be balance brought forward in 2021. Question C is show Accounts receivable in the Statement of Financial Position as at 31st December 2020. To answer the question, we start with the title SharikatBollywood.com Statement of Financial Position Bracket Partial or Sebahagian Ini kerana kita hanya mencatat bahagian account receivable sahaja. As at 31st December 2020. For current asset, accounts receivable 342,500 that we get from the answer for question B. Deduct allowance for doubtful debt 10,000 is also from answer from question B. Then, total is 332,500 is the net realizable value. That's all for topic accounting for receivable. See you on next video for next topic. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share. 
Thank you very much and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.